Well, hey guys, uh, it's Volto here, and I'm finally ready to show off a project that I have been working on on and off for the last four years, uh, which is my very own custom Splatoon maps. Now, this is something that I started back when in 2019 when we were still playing Splatoon 2, which is crazy to think about, and now I've updated it one final time. This is the fourth and final revision, and I think it's gotten to a point where I can be myself satisfied. Uh, let's cut to the chase. Maps are Splatoon 3's weakest point right now, by far. The map, the meta is very much controlled by how limiting the maps are. If you watched Chara's video on the subject, where he, by Pedal Squid and FLC, explained exactly why the choke points are so problematic and why there, it's an issue that there's so many in the current maps, um, you know exactly why weapons like E-Leader are so annoying and why Crab Tank is just so, so extremely dominant. And I won't spend too much time explaining that here, so really go watch that video if you haven't yet, it's in the description as well. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is present you with my work, what exactly I've done to not only go against what the, the current trends in the Splatoon 3 maps are and that are making the maps worse, but also my own insights, my own personal opinions on, you know, the little things that may be hindering the map design of the current maps. So let's just jump into it. First things first, I am using SketchUp, which is a very simple web-based application that everyone can use, it's free, and it's just so so easy to build any kind of simple 3D model as long as you use simple shapes. I'd love to make a tutorial on that if uh, anyone's interested, um, we, we'll see. Let's just say you can subscribe and maybe expect it to come out sometime in the future. Anyway, the map itself uh, is called Oasis Slides. It's an abandoned water slide in the Splatlands that is being reconstructed after the sudden surge in popularity of the area. Inklings uh, don't like water, so they have decided to just take the chance and take advantage of the scaffolding and uh, the architecture for as long as they can before the construction works get completed and the place is flooded with water and annoying jellyfish. So you'll see a lot of slides here. <laughs> well, gotta say, some of these slides don't look too convincing because rotating because smooth, uh, curving objects are not exactly SketchUp's strong suit, so you'll see a lot of stuff that looks like this. Please just pretend there's there's slides. Um, th seriously, I've tried so hard and I can't get it right. Just pretend these are curvy slides. Righto, so onto the map design itself. We shall obviously start from spawn, and this is very straightforward. So you've got three main options here. One, you can uh, spawn straight up. We're using Splatoon 3 spawn, obviously. Uh, so you can shoot yourself onto the ground here. There's low ground. This is risky if there's people spawn camping you, but of course there's a lot of room that you can paint for special points, and it's the quickest way to get to mid. Alternatively, you can propel yourself towards the left side, which does give you a bit of safe high ground to go around this low ground, which is obviously dangerous otherwise, which gets you to this high ground, which also gets you to this uh, part of mid, which uh, you can get to, that allows you to get some high ground through this small slide, or this left flank, which we will be talking about later. This is a great, by the way, very narrow uh, platforms like this are greats, consider them greats. Alternatively, there is a right path here. This is also very safe and uh, it takes a bit longer to traverse, but you've got a decent amount of cover and it gives you many options. You can obviously drop on the low ground here, you can drop on this high ground, which is very useful in retakes and you're completely safe here in splat zones. This is the splat zones and turf for layout, by the way, I forgot to say. Um, or you can go all the way down here, which will drop you directly onto this right flank. It's an extremely safe option to circumnavigate, ex uh, annoying, uh, to circumnavigate annoying defending players that are just sitting in mid. Um, and again, we will be talking about the flank later. There's a lot to talk about, as you can see. So, moving on forward. There's this little jump you can take here, which will take you straight to this fighting area. I'm not sure how to call it, but this is where I think most of the fighting will happen. Um, 
you've got uh, this, this is kind of straightforward, just move up here and you can either drop into mid or use this slide here to get to the high ground. Alternatively, there is an area here which is kind of interesting because uh, again, it, it helps them in retakes because obviously they have access to this ramp right here and allows them to get to high ground safely. Meanwhile, the attacking uh, the attacking team will have to kind of go around, push up and then take the ramp. Uh, obviously, enemy, uh, obviously, retaking backlines here also have an advantage thanks to this high ground platform, but I decided to extend this little block here forward so that way it's not super easy to snipe people that are coming from the left over there. This is important. Lines of sight is something that in my opinion Splatoon 3 doesn't really get right. Uh, line of sight is basically how much uh, a given player can see and chargers in Splatoon 3 have extremely good line of sight. Uh, and that is also doubly true, f doubly, that is also twice as true for crap tank users. Mm. So things like this prevent it. It's also something that Nintendo tried to rectify with the that poll update in the fresh season, but in my opinion this is a bit more elegant because it doesn't really take up as much space. Mm. So you also see a few of these covers here. These are uninkable, the ones I'm touching, and they're supposed to be lockers, like the ones that you see in the lobby. I think it could be cool to show the player's lockers in the map, but obviously, you know, this isn't really an actual map, so it's just funny ideas I'm coming up with. Don't take them too seriously. Right, let's move up to the meat of this map, which is mid and the huge ass flanks. So mid is not something I'm very proud of. Uh, it's very, very small, as you can see. I use this uh, inkling model for scaling, which, by the way, scaling is super hard. Uh, if something looks a little too big or a little too small, I'm very sorry, but scaling without being able to playtest this stuff is very hard. Anyway, mid is tiny and cramped, and I don't like it. Uh, I feel like people would complain about this a lot and be absolutely right. Um, regardless, uh, I decided to kind of take the chance and find a funny excuse for that uh, and say that, well, technically this is a water park and after you come down from a slide you're not really supposed to sit around in the main swimming pool for too long because that's dangerous and people might crash into you if you don't move, so you know what, uh, inkling sh Inklings shouldn't really do that either. <laughs> so having said that, let's see what your other options are. Well, obviously you can push up here from mid, there's this kind of slide that connects the two high ground platforms, which I think is kind of cool, but I might have made a little too big. Takes up a lot of space in mid, as you can see, so that could have been done better. But obviously you've got the two flanks on the side. Let's start from this. The right flank starts from your side of mid, which is very safe, and goes all the way around here. So let's uh, separate. Let's look at this closely because it's a bit complicated. It's a layered flank. You can either stay on the low ground, which has a decent amount of cover, but obviously you're in low ground, so that's a bit dangerous. Or you can go on the high ground, which doesn't have cover, but uh, obviously you're in high ground, so if you're fighting people that aren't down there, uh, you are a bit safer. Both of them kind of reunite here at this wall, because you should be able to climb this and go onto this, this grate from below and from there you can either reconnect to the enemy uh, side of this fighting area and go directly on the high ground and flank or you can go all the way and take this risky one-way drop which puts you in severe low ground for a long time and also forces you to take this uninkable oh god this is so ugly this is supposed to be a slide again but I, I really can't model, I'm so sorry. This is an inkable though, and it's very tiny. So you move up here very slowly, you get up here, and once you're here, you're also below this grate that is safe territory for the enemy. In order to move out, you have to take this big jump, and after you do that, you are stuck here with a bottomless pit right behind you. However, you are also very deep into enemy territory, so if you can pull it off, it's very useful. I don't think this will be something that players would do often, but I think it's very nice to have an option, you know? It's very nice to say, okay, well, I have a brush and I can move very fast and I would like to take the chance. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I have quick respawn. Who cares? <laughs> That's kind of my thought process. Uh, so from here on out, in Splat Zones and Turk 4, the only way to push up is this big choke point. You can make a jump with the in squid form here and you should be able to reach the other side if my calculations are correct. 
And from here you're in low ground and uh, you know, you're not really gonna spawn camp much because the point of this map is to kind of have many options to get out of mid. So again, I don't want to encourage going up here in turf or in splat zones because it's useless and it's also not fun. So I decided to make this choke point a little awkward to move through. I think it makes sense. I think that's about it for splat zones. So as you can see, the map looks fairly standard, maybe a bit too big. We'll get into that. But overall, you know, everything works, everything has a, everything has a place. And here's where it gets funny, because I made this thinking about Splat Zones. I wasn't really, I didn't really realize that, but Splat Zones was my default mode here. And so, here's when I learned something. You know how a lot of people say that, um, well, it's kind of awkward to play every map on every single mode, because certain maps are just going to be a better fit for certain modes and bad fit for others. And, I, and, so, Nint and so, Nintendo should be making for example, one map work on one single mode in competitive. And that's something I didn't quite understand until now, because here's the Raymaker layout and things get very messy. Okay, so you might not notice a lot of differences at first, but trust me, making figuring this out was hell. Already, we can probably tell if you're an experienced Splatoon player. The flanks are a huge issue here in Rainmaker because, okay, so your Rainmaker's bubble is here in mid. I removed the slide to make more room for it. Pretty standard stuff. Let's say you win the fights in mid and pop. Your safest option is obviously the right flank because you can backtrack and you can go up here, take the long way around, and suddenly you are in enemy territory completely far away from this opponent's spawn. You have a decent amount of cover and you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can stall here if you want until your opponent your teammate until your teammates win fights. Or you can just make a run for it while everyone is busy in mid. This flank does not work for Raymaker and I had no idea how to make it work. In the end, instead of walling it off, which was honestly a bit awkward, I decided to simply make it a Raymaker free zone and it should be a very harsh one. So you know, you really gotta discourage uh, people from taking the Rainmaker here, cause that just doesn't work. I'm very sorry. So having said that, the left flank is still available. You can still go up here on the left and drop here to go around. It's not particularly useful, but it's an option if you want. Other than that, you just kind of want to get out of mid. So I added this ramp to make it easier. You can still take the steps. <clears throat> and from here on out, the map opens up a little bit. Trouble's still not over though, because I had to, again, keeping giving players options while still making the map, you know, feel like itself was a bit of a hard time here, because, um, well, for starters, I had to add this grate here, because, you know, kind of necessary. But I also had to put the checkpoint here, which is very late, very close to the goal, which is unusual. And I had to put a second one here, because here's where things get even worse. I need a second path, because it's Rainmaker. I don't want to force people to go to this choke point, like in Splat Zones, because that doesn't make sense. So now, Rainmaker Holder has to go through the left as well, if, he doesn't go, if they don't want to go to the right. And well, you can see why this is wrong, okay? So this is a big high ground. Being able to get up here is a big deal because again Rainmaker stalling is an issue. How do we prevent this? Well I'm not sure we can other than we can discourage it. So in order, in order to discourage it I decided to place the Rainmaker goal here on the right where my cursor is and add a ramp that allows you to get up there easily if you take the right path here to the choke point. So if you go up here yes you can still technically stall even though you're kind of vulnerable because there's this path to your left obviously. Mm, but if you do actually want to make points, you'll have to either drop down into low ground and uh, kind of take the long way around to the ramp, or <laughs> this was kind of I kind of added this for fun. I'm not sure if this is necessary. I put this block here that you can kind of climb on from here and then jump across, and then you also have to you know go back to the right for the goal. Um, <laughs> I I struggled here. Okay, I struggled. Rainmaker was not easy, and I can totally see why people would rather have just one mode per map in competitive. Tire control was even worse, I ended up just deciding to keep this uh, layout because it kind of worked out. I hate, I kind of had to make these flanks go a little underutilized so that's disappointing but the tower path uh, is gonna appear right now on the screen through a PNG that I 
uh, very carefully hand drawn just for you guys. So there's that. You should be able to jump across uh, onto the high ground on the left uh, after that checkpoint that you can see up there and then the tower is gonna end up near the opponent's spawn. Pretty standard stuff so let's not focus on this too much and instead let's move on to something a bit more pleasant, Clam Blitz. Clam Blitz was easy. I think this map's a natural fit for Clam Blitz because it has a lot of things going for it that kind of work for it. So. Clams are gonna spawn mainly in mid and around the flanks in order to keep things moving. I like the idea of players kind of cycling uh, through all of the flank options <coughs> and sticking together in order to make power clams with a few clams spawning near this area uh, that I showed you earlier. The basket is going to be sitting here on the right. I removed one of the grates here to make room for that. The main reason why it's not here on the left is exactly why people don't like Sturgeon, which is a uh, high ground uh, that's very safe for the attackers, near uh, that allows you to shoot a pirate clam directly into the basket is just a little too snowbally for, you know, the competitive scene's tastes. So I put the basket on the right and instead the left high ground have been lowered slightly, so it's a little less effective to, you know, maintain uh, control but it's also a bit easier to climb on and to get down from, most importantly. So I think Clam Blitz works well, has a, good, uh, has a good flow to it, I like it. So before we move on to the conclusions, a couple of things. Object placement is just not even considered, like I didn't place sponges. I think it's pretty obvious that sponges and stuff are going to be necessary somewhere. Like for instance, I want a defender sponge here near the spawn and uh, I have some cover balloons could be useful but let's not focus on that. So, uh, general thoughts on the map and what did I so what did I learn from doing this? So for starters I learned that map design is much harder than I thought, like way harder. And I think it kind of turned me doing this kind of turned me from a chronic complainer into a kind of critical thinker in a way cuz uh, it helped me understand exactly what role every part of a map plays. And I don't know, it got me thinking. It's a very fun thinking exercise and I think it improved me as a player as well. Aside from that, um, I learned that good ideas and, you know, being aware of Splatoon 3's map problems are not really enough. The execution is the hardest part of everything. You can have the best ideas in the world, like we all know, oh, I want good flanks, I want more options, that's something everyone can think, but the actual execution is so much harder, which is why I struggle so much with mid and with uh, a lot of other things, especially when it comes to the scaling. So. Uh, another thing that I realized is having lots of options in spawn is good, but not great if you end up making the spawn larger than <laughs> the rest of the map. Like, this takes so long to get through. I like having options, but I overdid it here, and I think in modes like Splatoons it's gonna take way too long to get to mid and affect the objective. Similarly, having good and wide flanks is fun, but it's very... you risk making the map very dispersive. What are the chances that p people will focus their fights on mid? Mid is no longer the most important part of the map, and so it's a bit in unbalanced. There's a risk that people are not gonna run into each other and that there's not gonna be a lot of fighting. That's an issue that's a very big issue with the map. Most likely the worst, if you ask me. And finally, obviously, the mode issue. Uh, really eye-opening. I had no idea that adapting one map design to four modes was just this hard. And I totally get people that want one map per mode now. I kind of wish I could have only designed this with Splat Zones or Clam Blitz in mind, because it would have made things so much easier. And honestly, I don't even think the Rainmaker and Tar Control layouts are that good, so there's that. Overall though, I do think that I did a good job. The map has a lot of personality, a lot of exaggeration. Like, all of these aspects, I kind of turned them to the extreme, you know? With the slides and the huge flanks and stuff. It has personality and I think it would fit well in the game, given a few adjustments, obviously. It could be fun. It could be a decent B-tier map if we keep all of the best and worst maps in the game. That's how I see it, at least. So in conclusion, uh, this is something that was very time-consuming, but also very, very fun. And was a learning experience, for sure. 
I'm very thankful for everyone that's helped me and that's given me feedback with this as I was building it and everyone that encouraged me to finish it. And I'm just so so glad that I can show it to you guys on YouTube. I'm just so proud of this. I, I just I just look at the 3D models sometimes and just wonder, wow, how the fuck did I do that? It's just very satisfying and I hope that with this video I inspire other people to do the same, to study the map design of the first three games of Splatoon, figure out what they like and what they don't like and make their own maps because that is just such a fun thing. I had so much fun. Thank you guys for watching the video. Feel free to share it, feel free to tell me your opinion in the comments. I love constructive criticism, I love talking about the, my work, so by all means if you have any questions or pointers just let just give them to me in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. Very, I'll be very glad to talk to you guys. See you. Thanks.